Welcome back to SnowRunner. In today's episode, we want to complete the job drainage, but before that, we're going to use the Chevrolet CK1500, which we left at the watchtower in the last episode. And if we head further west, there is another job to pick up, Riverside Repair, and even further west, or northwest I should say, there is a new vehicle we can pick up. I'm hoping we can just go and pick it up and we don't have to do anything to it, but we shall see when we get there. The Chevrolet CK1500 does have uh, repairs, uh, repair parts on it alongside some fuel, so if it needs it, that's what we can use. But that is our plan for today. Drainage we're going to look at once we rescue this vehicle and pick up the other job as well. They do look easily placed, these pumps, so I don't think we're going to have too many issues getting them done, but that could be famous last words. Okay, off we go in the Chevrolet CK1500. We're just going to head across this little river bit here. Again, very muddy, very soft mud as well, but we should be okay with the raised body that the CK1500 has. And it does seem to make light work of it, to be fair. Oh, that's a little bit deeper. I think we're okay, though. So we've got a little hill to climb here. It's actually not a bad crossing, that, to be fair. I did think that was going to be a lot worse than what it was. And uh, making sure work of the small climb here as well. A little bit skiddy in places, but not too bad. So we take a right turn here. Get a bit stuck in the mud here. Come on, there we go. Uh, right hand turn, and then we can pick up this riverside repair job. It is just here, yep. So we'll pick this up on our way past. It's always handy to have these jobs on our list so we know we can do them when we have the ability to do so. Saves going to pick them up, then having to go all the way back to get what you need to then come back and pick and then drop it off. It just saves a journey, I think. So this is riverside repair let's accept it we'll add it to a list and then we'll have a quick look at what it needs so this needs service spare parts times two and wooden planks times two service player parts we do have on the trailer that's highlighted near the town and then the wooden planks will come from the lumber mill that doesn't seem that too bad a job to be fair that's something we could look at in a future episode but that doesn't look too bad doesn't have to go that far either I think I'm, I think we could get a combination of trucks used as well. Okay, I said in the last episode there is still one watchtower missing. The first one that you just saw down the south of the map, we haven't got that one for some reason. I don't know why we haven't. So that's something we do need to do because we're probably missing upgrades and things from it. So we have to have a look at that in due course. But first, we need to finish off what we want to do today. Just checking the trailer does have what we need. I think it's only got one service spare parts on, isn't it? Okay, we'll sort that mission out. It's not a problem. We'll sort out a later date. I'm not too worried today. So let's crack on. We need to get up this hill, and there is a vehicle to pick up up here. Although we've already got stuck. Come on, Chevrolet. We don't normally get stuck. I don't understand why. This vehicle never or very rarely gets stuck in the mud. It has been so good to us so far as a scout vehicle. We have got a winch, so we can just winch her out ourselves free. Hopefully get onto a bit firmer ground as we try and get up this hill. Winch is working perfectly, though. Okay, we're up, we're going. Again, we're going to try and stay off that soft mud, I think, as much as possible. This looks like quite a tight path, so we've got to be careful. I don't want to go too quickly and roll or do anything silly. So we're going to be careful here. Yeah, a bit bouncy. The race suspension, I'm in two minds about. We have it on the GMC, which we don't really use, to be fair. We've also got the race suspension on this Chevrolet, and it makes it more bouncy, but I don't know if that actually helps in the water, because obviously the bodywork is further out of the water. So I wonder if that does help. I'm just concerned about the bouncing around more than anything else. If anyone knows about the race suspension, whether it is a good thing or a bad thing, or depending on the situation or vehicle, do let me know in the comments. I'm curious. It's really the best way to have it. I'm, every time we get an upgrade, I'm trying to stick it on the vehicle. But I'm, not, I'm a bit unsure about this raised suspension. As I say, we have put it on the GMC. And it hasn't helped. Um, whereas this is very bouncy. And I wonder if that is because of the, the uh, raised suspension that's causing that. And would it be better to have it lowered, maybe? I'm not sure. We can always take it off. It's not the end of the world. Um... Okay, we're still going further, further up the, fit, the hill. This was quite a twisty turn of hill, to be fair. I think we're making good progress. We must be getting close now. I've got another marker coming up. It's 
It's always a bit weird just driving uphill. Oh, that's tight. No, that's not as tight as it first looked, actually. Um, yeah, just because you don't really know where you're going. Um, and I do struggle on the hills to keep an eye on the pathway. But we're here. I can see a house on our left-hand side. And I can see a vehicle. That is a brand new vehicle. That is the Scout, uh, Scout 800, in fact. So I'm guessing it's a Scout vehicle, hence the name. Let's have a quick look at it. It looks in good condition. It looks uh, an okay vehicle to use. We'll be looking at that in due course. So I think the best thing we can do is get this recovered back to the garage. And as we're still here, we want to continue with the mission, mission drainage. And for that, we can use the Chevrolet. So we're just going to send the Scout 800 back to the garage. And that is done. Now we can head back out in the Chevrolet and hopefully go and find this first drainage pump. It's not too far away. We want to be careful here though, I don't want to take any shortcuts, I think if we follow the path back down the hill, it would be our safest option. It's going to take it a little bit easy, going up is one thing, coming down is another, and I don't really want to roll. That's my other concern with the race suspension, is how easy it is to roll the vehicles. I don't know if maybe a lower, lower body would keep it more stable potentially. But it's one of those things to kind of work out as we go along I'm sure. Okay, let's keep heading down the hill and then we can get to this first drainage pump. What we probably will do, we'll then swap to the Scout 800 and use that to go and get the ones near the garage. I think that sounds like a good plan. Um, as that's closer now we've recovered it. There was no point having two vehicles close together here. It wouldn't have made no sense. Recovering it to the garage means we can have a quick look at upgrades when we get to it and send it out to do the other two pumps that are near it. And the Chevrolet can stay here for the time being once we've got this drainage pump found. So that kind of makes sense in my head. We've got spare fuel on top if we do get low. We're about halfway through our fuel currently, but that should be okay. Okay, down the hill, slow. Oh, no, yeah, okay. I thought we were really going to go over then. Okay. Yeah, that worried me. We've got a bit more speed down that hill than I wanted. No, no, ah. Oh. You're kidding me. The one thing I was worried about coming down the hill was rolling it. And uh, we've rolled it. The Chevrolet is over. I've been thinking about this autonomous winch for a while. The autonomous winch is in the shop. It's quite expensive. But it works when your engine is stalled. Um, like this. So we're stuck. I don't think we're going to make it to that first drainage pump. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, is it? I've got another way around this. It's too far away to send something out to rescue it. Because we might send something straight to the drainage pump, if that's the case. Uh, it's just annoying. I thought we had it. I really thought we had it. Okay, we're back in the garage now with the Scout 800. Let's have a look at what we can add to this after messing up in the Chevrolet. So, we can add a frame add-on, roof rack as well, similar to what we had on the Chevrolet. But that roof rack we just put onto this carries 140 fuel instead of 40. That is a massive difference. 40 fuel on the Chevrolet, 140 on the Scout. That's big. That's a big difference. We've also taken off the SnowRunner gearbox off the Chevrolet, and you've just seen us put it on the Scout 800 instead. Just wanted to see how it worked. Now, we do need new tyres, I think, on this. Currently, road tyres are on it. I don't think that's a good option. So we need to figure out what tyres to have here. I was looking at what we could take off the Chevrolet and put on this, but actually, we can't put the tyres from the Chevrolet on the Scout because it needs a higher suspension. And the race suspension on the Chevrolet isn't compatible to the Scout. So instead, we're going to buy the 35-inch OS1s off-roads. I think that is our best bet. Uh, we, we've also um, sold the 31-inches um, AS2s, all-terrain, for 2500 Now, I did consider the autonomous winch. As we've seen, it would be handy. But actually, it's very expensive. I'm not sure if it's a good plan or not. I'm kind of in two minds. So we're going to send out the Scout. So this is our first time actually driving the vehicle as we leave the garage. We're going to head to the pump that's actually behind the garage. Um, we've been kind of up this road a little bit before. So we've done a few uh, journeys via this road that we're going to go up. Um, but instead of going round, we're going to go to the right, essentially. We'll see when we get there. It makes sense in my head. It does doesn't. It kind of doesn't come out the way I want it to. But I know where we're going. That's the important thing, I suppose. Um, currently, though, let's see how we get on with Scout 800. Very surprised in the last episode 
with the Kodiak, so I'm hoping this is similar to that. It's a new vehicle and it's better than what we had in the Chevrolet. Our first test, though, is this muddy bog that we have traversed previously in the Chevrolet. We'll try and skip around the edge here. So far, so good. Obviously, we've put the off-road tyres on, so that should make a difference. We sold the all-terrain tyres mainly because I didn't think we needed them um, with the tyres that are on the Chevrolet. It was just a set of tyres we didn't need. Um, and we haven't really sold anything so far, but I thought we might as well, if we're not using them, there's no harm in sending them. I don't know what percentage of money you get back when you sell something. That's the only thing I'm a bit concerned with, so I've got to be very careful really what we buy. And I'm still thinking about the autonomous winch. It's a lot of money, it's 9,000 something, 9,400 I think. Um, but we've seen how much the Chevrolet has got rolled over in the past. Autonomous winch means if we roll we can write ourselves. Especially on scout vehicles, I think that would be quite important. So it's just a lot of money to spend. Currently, though, the scout making short work of this climate. Made it through the mud very, very well. And, yeah, it's not really struggling. We have got the SnowRunner gearbox on the Chevrolet on this. But it's doing okay. Um, I like the fact it can carry more fuel than the Chevrolet can. I think, to me, that makes a better scout vehicle. It's more self-sufficient. Um, we don't really need to worry about fuel as much. Uh, when we're driving this, whereas the Chevrolet, yes, we could top it up a little bit, but again, how long would it last? So, I'm kind of in favour of the Scout 800 at this point, but we'll see how we go. Obviously, it's very early days, but so far it does seem new vehicles seem to be better. Although, I do think two Scout vehicles is better than one, because you could send them out in different directions kind of thing, and it speeds that process up, potentially. We'll see. Okay, so this is the right-hand turn I was talking about. Normally we'd carry on left and up the hill and on the way to the warehouse. But we're off to the pump that's here. So we're going to find a way through these trees. And it looks like we're going to be in some muddy, boggy water. So we're going to have to be very careful. But it'll be a proper test for this Scout 800 at the same time. So let's find a path through these. Kind of heading to the marker, although the marker was just randomly put there. Well, not randomly, but I didn't know what the train was like kind of thing, so I kind of guessed. Right, down the hill. Oh, nearly nosed it, but we're okay. There's a vehicle there as well. Okay, right, okay. Let's start, try and stick to the bits where there's plant life coming through the water, because that would mean that's the higher points, I think, of the water area. Although we are stuck now. Uh, we should better winch ourselves, hopefully, here. We go to the tree. That's ahead of us, yeah. Okay, perfect. I want to know where that vehicle is. Is that another vehicle we can obtain for ourselves? Because that would be incredible. Our garage is growing quickly. Okay, we've winched ourselves out of that problem. No, are we stuck? I'm kind of... Uh, this is not a good situation. Come on, pull ourselves towards the... No! Oh, not again. Not again. Not again. It happened again, so we've had to bring back the Chevrolet. We we covered it back to the garage from when we previously rolled it over, and we've sent it out to where the Scout 800 is. So we're just approaching the Scout 800 now, and the pump. We're going to try and go down a different way to what the Scout did, because it nearly went nose first and flipped over. So I'm a little bit more careful with the Chevrolet, mainly because, obviously, the raised body with the raised suspension could become an issue going down that really steep hill. So we somehow need to get the Scout 800 flipped over. If not, we'll recover it. I'd rather flip it if we can. We need to have a proper look at this vehicle that's stuck here as well. If we can recover that, fantastic. Um, and the pump is also here. So we haven't really achieved very much so far this episode, bar picking up a job and uh, getting the Scout 800, but that's about it. I feel like we need to achieve more. Chevrolet getting a bit stuck in the mud. This is exactly where the Scout 800 got stuck, to be fair. But the Chevrolet is still moving. The only down... I'm kind of regretting putting the Snow Runner gearbox in the Scout 800 while we need to use a Chevrolet. Um, because we are limited then on our gearbox. The Snow Runner gearbox is a better off-road gearbox. So, yeah. I, need to, I wanted to try it out in the Scout 800, but currently regretting that, as that would make this a little bit easier. But we're on to the bit of land... So now I'm thinking, by the tree, use the tree as a jack in, as a point of contact, stop us rolling ourselves. I'm hoping we can winch um, 
the Scout 800 over back onto its wheelbase because we can't be moved ourselves. The tree's going to stop us moving towards the vehicle. There we go. It is working. Kind of. We've kind of pulled it out of the water, but it's still on its side. Yeah, it's still on its side. I just, I, I wanted to use the tree as an anchor point just so we didn't move. And it did work, but we need to flip this back over still. Let's try from the bottom, the back of the vehicle. Can we flip the back, potentially? Pull it towards us and maybe right it? There we go. There we go. Yes! Scout 800 recovered. It worked. I'm happy with that. Um, I need to be a bit more careful. I didn't think there was that kind of slope there, to be fair. Since we're already in the Chevrolet, though, let's have a quick look at this vehicle here and what we've got to do for this. Let's have a look. New objective discovered. So we can repair this vehicle first. So it is damaged. So it looks like we need to repair it. The Chevrolet doesn't carry many repairs. Not compared to the Scout. But let's have a quick look. What we need. Uh, was I not close enough? There we go. Definitely close enough now. Let's have a look. Okay. Uh, there we go. Wow, it's badly damaged, isn't it? It is badly damaged. Wow, okay. Um, we don't have enough on the Chevrolet to fix this. I think the Scout does. So can we switch vehicle to the Scout? Now we've rescued it. Um, I want to be a bit more careful with this. I didn't expect that to roll so easily. We don't need to repair ourselves, so that's good. Need to kind of get out of this situation, though, don't I? Can I do it from here? Okay, we need to get back across to where the Chevrolet is and see if we can fix this vehicle and see what happens there. We've not had to fix a vehicle before. Okay, we are a bit stuck here. Um, we're not really moving. We're just spinning our back tyres, and that's about it. It's in all-wheel drive as well, so actually all four tyres are spinning, but the back ones you can see in the water. Uh, what is our best bet here? Need a winch to something, don't I? There we go. We've winched to the truck that's in the water as well. Turning us. Don't, don't roll over now. Don't roll over. Don't roll over. I think we're okay. Slowly does it. Come on. Nearly there. Okay. It did work. I did, because the other truck is quite stuck, I just thought it would be a good point to, to cut winch from because it's not going to move, is it? I don't think these vehicles are powerful enough to move it, to be fair. Right, we can now fix it by the looks of things. If we fix it, can we then recover it? Although it did say there's a job, wasn't it? So I wonder. I think we've actually got to send it somewhere else. Not too sure that's going to work. Okay, so that is that truck fully repaired. Now, now what? Uh, okay, I can't swap to it. I thought I could, might be able to swap to it to drive it, but we can't. So it obviously still needs pulling out. Then I would guess we'll work. We'll work on that another time. I want to get this drainage job done while we're here. Yeah, what's it say there? Okay, we can accept. We haven't actually accepted the job. Accept the job. We fixed the vehicle. They do not need to fix it then, because it's not cost me anything to fix it other than time. But if we can't drive it, does that then mean we just we didn't need to fix it? We just pull it out and send it. Potentially. Yeah, wheels are sorted. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to work out what to do with that. I've never done one of those before, so that will be something new for us to do in the future. At least we know where it is now. It's another job. Um, but while we're still in the Chevrolet, let's quickly go and grab this first pump. So at least we have one of the pumps of the three done for today. Finally, we've done one part of the job drainage. We're now back in the Scout 800, just passing the farm here. We have recovered this to the garage. I wanted to restock anyway after fixing the, the other vehicle and uh, just make sure we had everything on board. We've also brought the autonomous winch. Yes, I know I said it was expensive, but as we just proved when we rolled over in this, that if we had the autonomous winch, we could have helped ourselves. So to solve that issue happening again, I've brought one. Very expensive, 9,400. Downside is, well, it's expensive. We've got very little money left. My thinking is, though, obviously we can put this on other vehicles. From what I know and what I've been told and what you guys have said, 
if we take something off something, some, if it's compatible, it can go on other things. So I'm hoping this winch, if we're using the Chevrolet, can be put on that. Um, if we're using the Scout, it can be kept on the Scout. Hopefully that's how it works. Um, what's the bet? And I've bought it, spent all that money on it, and now we don't need it because it's not gonna, we're not going to roll a game or something silly. I think the Scout did a good job until we got stuck and rolled, obviously. Um, this is its true test, going for this second pump. This time, though, making short work of the water. And we're here. We're the second pump. That is job done. That's two of three down. And it did make short work of it. I, do I prefer the Scout 800 over the uh, Chevrolet? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know which one is better. I think the Chevrolet bounces around a lot more, but obviously it's got the raised suspension. Scout seems more compact, but can carry more fuel and more repairs. I don't know. I don't even even know. I kind of think we need both for the time being, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Which one do you think is better, the Chevrolet CK1500 or the Scout 800? Let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously, we've only got one Snow Runner gearbox, and currently it's on the Scout 800, which does make the Chevrolet worse. When it had the Scout, um, the Snow Runner gearbox, it was better. Uh, so when we got to helping the Scout at the last pump. There was definitely a difference without the gearbox. So, we'll see. I don't, it's one of those. I don't want to have too many of the same type of vehicles. Because, what's the point? Um, you're only going to use drive one at a time. Two is generally helpful. Any more than two may be too much. Um, but have we kind of messed up the Chevrolet by giving the snow on a gearbox to the Scout when it maybe didn't need it? I don't, I don't know. I'm in two minds. But while we're doing that, we've got to try and get out of this bog. Um, and then make our way towards the town. That's some damage though. Suspension damage actually. That's not good. To be fair. Just caught the pump on the edge there I think. And just damaged the tyre. I don't know if that's tyre. But I think that, that's dropped it down massive. That's half of the suspension damage done. In one go there. But we are making it through the, the water and the mud. It, it does feel like a very good scout vehicle. As I say it's very compact. I don't think it's going to roll that easily. Yes, we've already rolled it, but I don't think it's going to roll very easily. We fixed our own suspension there. That's the other thing it can do. It can fix itself because the amount of stuff it can carry, which I think is a good thing. Um, yeah, we're all fixed. I can still hear the tyre um, noise from when you get damage on the tyres, but the tyres seem okay. So I don't really know what's going on there. That noise is still coming through the control. It's really annoying. So, what we're going to do, we're going to carry on driving the Scout 800. We're going to head to the town. And then as we pass the town, we're going to then jump back in and carry on towards the third and final pump.
we've made it through the town and now we're just coming up to another job we can pick up on the way to the third and final pump so this is stuck trailer okay where is the trailer let's have a look where the mission is ah okay doesn't look too bad obviously the problem I've got with some of these things the stuck things is I would probably use the Fleet Star or the Kodiak. The Fleet Star has got all-wheel drive, Kodiak doesn't. But one of those seems to be the better, or well, both of them are good vehicles, probably with the power to pull stuff out of places where it's stuck. So we do need to have a look at those stuck items. I think sooner rather than later, there are jobs we need to do. It's money, it's, it's XP. And the XP we need to get to level rank 6, level 6, rank 6 I think it's called, and that will give us better tyres for both the Chevrolet Kodiak and the Fleet Star. So because of that we do need to be looking at doing some of these stuck trailers, drowned trucks, things like that. Um, it's something we've got to think about and try and work out when to fit that in. But currently, to our current predicament, uh, we are stuck in the mud with the Scout 800. Okay, this wasn't fun. This was the journey, the route I'd picked to go and try and get to this pump. We are moving forward. It may not look like we are, but we are very, very slowly moving. There we go. I just needed it to get some grip. Um, we're on, we've obviously got uh, low range on, and that's helping. There we go. It's still going forward. Yeah, we're on. We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> um, the other thing I've noticed with the Scout as well, the diff lock is always on. Um, I, can't, I can't switch it off. It just seems to be standard on this compared to other vehicles where you can select it on and off once you're in low range. This is on. I don't know. If, I need to keep an eye on that little icon underneath the all-wheel drive and see if it goes off or in normal. Low range it is currently on. I'm curious. But that just means that all the wheels spin at the same speed which would make this a really good off-road truck if you don't need to keep it putting it on and off. I don't know how good it is for fuel management though. I don't know if it makes the fuel worse or not. We're going to have to stick into low range for the minute as we're going to try and make it through this mud and this water. There's no... I can't see a better route to get to this pump. This We're already halfway through this water now. It makes sense to keep going. And we are moving. It may not look it, but at times we are moving pretty well. We can also use the winch to keep us moving forward. As I say, this does have the autonomous winch on. I spent a lot of money on that. Um, it does kind of feel like I've given up on the Chevrolet. Although it's been really good to us so far as our first scout vehicle. Don't tip over now. Um, I've kind of, you know, I've robbed it of its gearbox. I've put the autonomous winch on the Scout 800. So it does kind of feel like I've given up on it. But I'm, I'm sure we'll still get uses out of it anyway. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm still in two minds. I don't know. Anyway, back to what I'm meant to be focusing on. So the pump we're coming out to over here. Uh, we need to follow this still. This road is, is obviously uh, submerged since the flood here on Black River. I'm wondering if we get all these three pumps done, does that mean some of this water disappears because they can drain it? Is that why we need to do this job by any chance? I don't know. I'm curious. That'd be handy if it does. If some of this water, even a little bit of it, disappears, that would help us massively. And I do wonder, you know, these are drainage pumps after all. So is that what the reason for this job after the flood? Um, which is, that's, the flood was what I was told about when we first started the game and started on Black River. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious whether the pumps will drain this water for us and make life a bit easier. Obviously these roads and these mud paths have kind of been er corroded or er eroded, I think it's the right word, um, from the flood, hence why Sometimes you can see bits of the road still remaining, other times you can't. All right, we are stuck again, but again we're still moving. It's very small and slight, but we are still moving forward. It's taking a bit of time. I thought we were going to get here really quickly, but obviously not. Uh, there's nowhere to winch to either at the minute. Is there nothing to winch to? Why does it look like there's nothing to winch to? That's okay. You know I said we were still moving, I don't think we are. Okay, we can winch ourselves to the side. Come on. A tree must be possible. Don't want to tip us over, but I just need to move us enough to get some grip. There we go. Has that helped? Really? A bit more. Uh, not really. Not 
really hasn't really helped. Has it helped? I'm kind of... We're moving a little bit. Come on, just do it. Yes, moving again. Just getting us to the side. It may just obviously get some grip on something underneath the water. Part of the old road, probably. And that helped massively there. I was a bit unsure how much that was helping, but it did. Okay. We're out of that bog. On to the next one. Obviously, the, the, the drainage pumps are situated in these boggy areas because uh, the water... It makes sense because the water's obviously gone higher from the flood. Hence, the pump's been where they are. Okay, our best route, I think... We're going to go off-road here to try and get round this water a bit better. It's maybe a really bad idea, but I just thought if we can avoid some of the water by staying on firmer ground, that would be a bonus. There we go. And then the road does get better. According to the map, the road will improve. I'm just going to get across here. We're okay. Making short work of that water, to be fair. Um, I've just noticed as well, the diff lock is still on, even though we're not in low range anymore. So, I think that's a good thing. I think that does make this Scout 800 better. The diff lock is permanently on, so every tyre spins at the same rate. I think that's why it's not having as much trouble in some of the areas the Chevrolet probably would, to be fair. But we'll see. We'll have to keep going. It's early days of each vehicle. I don't really know. I know what I like and what I enjoy using and what works best so far. But every time I pick something new up, I've got to work out the best way of comparing them or deciding which one is better. Because there must be something I should be looking for. Obviously, when the scout vehicles, you want the ones that don't get in trouble so much, probably don't fall over as much. Although, a lot of driver error. Um, carrying supplies is probably a good thing. Repairing and refueling. Um, so the amount of that they can carry. I'm kind of, yeah. You can see where I'm going with this. The, the scout 800 probably is better than the Chevrolet. To be fair. But, uh, yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm one of those people that doesn't like getting rid of things. Anyway, back to what we're trying to do and achieve. The pump is to our left-hand side here. I marked up on there because I was thinking of going down the road and up this long bit here and getting across. But how deep is it on our left-hand side coming up around this rock area? There's a little, and there's a chance we can go across earlier. I didn't mark this bit up. I was going to go across further down, but that doesn't look too bad. That, it was that gap here towards that little mini island in the middle that I was wary of. But actually, it looks a lot closer than the map shows. So ignore the marker for the minute. I think we're going to try and get across here. If obviously we can't, then we'll try and revert back to the old plan. But this looks doable. Lots of trees down in the water, by the sense. We've got some trees on the land. We are just on the brink here. We can just pull ourselves a bit more forward. We'll be under our own power again. Uh, where's the winch? There we go. Onto the tree. Once we're on firm ground, we'll go. It's not an issue. There we go. Sorted. Okay, the pump is dead ahead. We are getting there. It is just about there. We're nearly done. Come on. Keep going. Scout 800. Power through. Nearly there. It's making short work of this little island topping, isn't it? And that is it. We're here. That is the job. Drain is complete. And that is us done for today. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, a like does really help. And don't forget to subscribe as well. We'll see you next time. More Snowrunner.